Today we're going to be talking about how to find volume about the x and y axis. And this is a topic that we have been building for all year. So volume. Okay. This semester we started by looking at area under our curve. So finding that area. How did I originally start? We originally started by drawing rectangles. And we found the area of each one of these of each one of the rectangles. And then we made the widths of these rectangles infinitely small so that all I had was one little strip, one little rectangle that I was finding the area of. And I was summing up all those rectangles from A to B. Now when I'm summing up all of those rectangles from A to B, that's how we got the area under the curve. Now we're going to take this area and produce a solid by revolving it around an axis. Well, when I take this little strip and I revolve it around our axes, let's look at what type of figure we're going to come up with. When I take that one little strip and I revolve it, we're going to get a circle. So this volume here is made up of an infinite amount of circles that were made out of these rectangles that we originally started with. What's the formula for area of a rectangle? That's pi r squared. But what is r? r is our function value. So to find volume about the x-axis, our volume, that's pi r, is the radius of our function squared. And that's from values of a to b. Now, volume about the y-axis is the same thing. Just notice how our function is in terms of y. Our function, our variable, is in terms of y. This c and the d are going to be in terms of y. So our first example, find the volume of our solid generated by revolving our shaded region about the x-axis. So again, keep in mind, when I'm taking the shaded region and I'm revolving it about our axis, we're getting a circle. And there's an infinite amount of these little shaded areas in here. Okay, so we have a circle. We have pi r squared. We're revolving around the x-axis, so it's dx. What's our function? Our function is 4 minus x squared. What x values am I going from? I'm going from 1 to 2. I apologize, I'm going from 0 to 2. Keep going. So on the AP, they expect you guys to do some of these without a calculator. So what you want to do to t in order to take your integral is you're going to multiply all that out. And then you're going to actually take your integral. Notice how I'm carrying along my pi with it. And then what we're going to do is we have that formula. When you plug in 2, when you plug in 0, it doesn't matter. When we plug in 2, we get 32 minus 64 thirds plus 32 over 5. And that's going to simplify to 256 pi over 15. Okay. So I've noticed on the AP in the past few years, they've started to have you guys have to do this without your calculator. For many years it was you had to do that with, you could only use a calculator. But now there's going to be some examples where we have to do it without a calculator. Or they're going to ask you on the multiple choice to set it up without a calculator. So keep that in mind. Now, finding our volume by doing the shaded region across the y-axis. So, again, we have a bunch of circles that we're going to be adding together. So, our area is pi r squared. Since we're revolving around the y-axis, it's a dy. So, our y values that we're restricting are from 1 to 4. Then, we look at negative y squared plus 4y. Okay, 
Let's multiply all that out. We get a y to the fourth minus an 8y cubed plus a 16y squared dy. Find your integral, and I'm doing this all without a calculator. So I have 1 fifth y to the fifth minus 2y to the fourth plus 16 over 3y to the third. And I'm evaluating from 4 to 1, from 1 to 4. So, honestly, 4, a little bit big. Uh, when you plug it into 4, y to the 5th, so I'm not going to lie to you guys, I cheated and used my calculator on this. So when I plugged in, I got 1, 0, 2, 4 over 5 minus 512 plus 1, 0, 2, 4 over 3. And then plugging in 1, it's not 0 anymore, so when we plug in 1... Um, what do I get? I get 1 fifth minus 2 plus 16 over 3. So when I simplify that, I get 153 pi over 5. Now again, be prepared. They might ask you to do this on the AP without your calculator. I'm hoping they're not going to give you these crazy of numbers. I've never seen this crazy of numbers in the past, but keep that in mind. Okay, our next one. Find the volumes of the solid generated when our region is revolved around the x-axis. So let's look at what this graph looks like. And this graph, this equation should look familiar. I've been pushing you guys on this all year, that this is half of a circle. So I have a circle of radius 7. I'm going to take this area and we're going to revolve around our x-axis. So I wonder what happens when I revolve a semicircle around the x-axis. Let's look. So we have pi from negative 7 to 7 of our function squared dx. So we have the square root of 49 minus x squared Alright, taking my integral we have 49 x minus 1 third x to the third And again, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I used my calculator and I got 1372 pi over 3. Now let's talk about what this figure would be if I were to revolve it around. If I were to take a solid half a circle and revolve this around the x-axis, we would come up with a sphere. Okay, the formula for volume of a sphere, 4 thirds pi are cubed. So what's the radius? The radius of our sphere is 7. So when I plug that in, and again, I cheated, use my calculator, 1372 pi over 3. Okay? So you get the same thing coincidentally, not really coincidentally, because your volume that's going to ensue is going to be a sphere. Okay, that is all I have for you guys for today. Please make sure your lesson summary is submitted on time.